What is up? Thank you for coming to my channel, Prison POV. So today we're going to talk about the Pisa car. Shout out to the Pisces. They're cool, man. They are solid. When I first started coming to prison, though, they were not called Pisces. They were called Border Brothers. And then out of the blue one day, I came to the pen. They weren't Border Brothers. They were Pisces. Now, I've never seen anyone get a tattoo that said Pisa or Paisano. I've never seen that tattoo. But I did used to see Border Brother tattoos quite often. They like to get the Mexico flag on them. The Pisces do is a tattoo. They'll get their cities. I'm not going to try to pronounce them. The different cities they're from. And their last name. Cross, praying hands, Mother Mary. That sort of thing. If they get tattoos at all. Really, they don't really get that many tattoos. The Pisces don't. They're not a gang. They have potential to be a disruptive group. Just like Peckerwoods. Peckerwood is not a gang. Pisses off. It could be a disruptive group though. And that's what Pisces are. Very similar to Peckerwoods. They are what they are. They're on their own little set. And they kick it. They're very solid. They're one of the most united cars. I never see any bickering amongst them. Or like infighting. And they always just kick it very, very tight. Even on the streets you notice. I've had a couple of construction jobs. And when me, I'll be on the side with my sandwich and my phone. Some other guys eating lunch alone. The Pisces there on the job side be eating together. In a group, they'll have a flat, they'll have a big old burner, freaking hot plate, frying pans. They go all out making a big old feast, about 10 deep. That's how they're on the pen, too. They're very, very united and they stick together. So, oh, this shirt, man. Check this shirt out. What? A splinter shirt. I love it. Came from the same dude to sent the figurine. He's wearing the same shirt. From Joey Boots, a family, two bricks, Austin, Texas. Good looking out. So we're talking about the Pisces today. Now, they run with the Southsiders, man. They run with the Southsiders. I can think of a riot, though. I don't know enough details to make a video on it. I'm asked around, trying to talk to somebody. Maybe I'll even get an interview. There was a big riot between the Southsiders and the Pisces at TAS CCF. The Southsiders had to take the L on that one. The Pisces got them. And you do not want to be riding at a CCF, man, because that thing's going to go and go and go. There's no one there that's going to break it up. They're going to call out for help. You know when you're leaving Walmart, the guy you hand your receipt to that's what the CCF cops are like. 12 bucks an hour. They're not professional. They're not legit. It's like a side job if they go to school or some shit. Cannot compare them at all to real CDC cops. They're in real California prisons. Be that as it may. So, man. Yeah, the Pisces run with the Southsiders. Like this instance. Let me tell you this story. So, when I was at Soledad and the riot happened between the whites and the blacks. A big riot. I'm not going to get into it too much. I already have a video on it. The whites rush the blacks in the middle of the yard, and they're playing football. But over here, against this wall, with the phones, and there's some bars, and police and basketball courts, one of the, the Southsiders ended up getting involved. I heard different reasons why. The reason I'm going to go with, what I heard and what I believe sounds right to me, is I believe when the black guys took off on a white Southsider. So that got the Southsiders in, now they're fighting. Big riot, whites and Southsiders against the blacks. Cops finally come in, get everybody down. I'm in the dorm. If you watch my video, I couldn't go to Yarks. I was CTQ, confined to quarters. I just got there. So the white dude I was with, he got his nose all busted up. I ended up getting jumped. Got my ass beat. Cops come in, take all the blacks out. Had me in cuffs for a while in the day room. Finally took the cuffs off, put me on my bed. Now, in the yard, they finally had control of the yard. Got all the inmates down. And they go around, they start handcuffing them with those plastic handcuff deals because they don't want them jumping up and kicking them right off again. So I'm on my bed. This is a couple hours after the riot happened. But I'm on my bed. I'm kicking back. I'm in there. I'm the only white guy in the dorm. Handful of southerners. Some northerners. No blacks. And some Pisces. And a northerner who sleeps by me. And my bed is right here. It's by a window. And it looks out to the handball court. And the, a northerner who slept across from me. He goes, hey, Wood. They're trying to get your attention outside the window. Someone's trying to get your attention. Now, you're not supposed to be getting off your rack. You're supposed to be stuck on your rack. They got control of the situation. A big riot happened. Lockdown, it's coming, a fat one, stay on your motherfucking rack. But this dude told me they want my attention outside, someone outside on the yard wants my attention. I can't tell him no. No, I'm just going to stay on my bed. Cop said I can't get off and it's going to kick it right here. I'm going to chill right here. Nope, got up, had to go see what was happening, what was cracking. I look out there and I see a south sider. He's kind of far off and he's sent down, he's on the handball court and he's handcuffed. And I could tell when I look out, he's one wants my attention. He's getting, because, I mean, he's looking at me. Not that many other people out there. I see him, he starts trying to sign language me. He starts doing some sign language, sign language, sign language. Ooh, I stumbled on that word, didn't I? Sign language. Let me tell you about sign language. Now, when I was at CMC West, my good buddy Hot Rod, you've heard me talk about him before. He slept about 
eight beds away. During count times, they come in and count. They want you in the rack. It's radio silence. You can't do jack shit. You're stuck. While well, they count, and clear count, all that. Me and Harrow would sign language back and forth. Bullshit. And just talking shit. I got really used to his sign language. It's the same alphabet everyone uses. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Same shit. G, H, I, J. All that. Same shit. But everyone does it like just a little bit different. Everyone has their own little way they're doing it. So when sign language is hot rod, I can pick it up real fast what he's saying. Because I'm hand like a sign language with him all the time. Just like at Solid Dab when I was in Whitney on the second tier. Across from me, my buddy Mike from Ridgecrest. We would sign language all the damn time. I could see what he'd said real clearly because I sign language with him so much. But when you get a new guy you're going to sign language with, it's a little bit different. And now this guy's handcuffed. What I'm trying to tell you is I was stressed out. That news dude was going to give me a fucking message with sign language. It was probably going to be an important message. A big riot kicked off. Some cell was trying to give me something. He starts sign language. I'm like, fuck, dude. So I'm really paying attention. And if you miss one letter, you're lost. Think about it. Something. S-O-M-E-T-H-I-N-G. What if you blink and you miss S-O and they come at you with M-E-T-H-I-N-G. You're like, me thing? Where's me thing? Where's me boat? Where's me sword? Me thing? What the fuck? You'll get all confused if you miss one fucking letter. Here I am, looking out the window at this guy. Focusing, blah, 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 sweating, focus on every fucking letter as he's handcuffed way over in the fucking handball court. He's giving me the things and he tells me the message is tell the Pisces to get involved if something happens in the Southsiders ride. Tell the Pisces ride the Southsiders. I was like, what? He gave me that message. I just went, okay, bye and walked away. First off, well, I didn't pass the message to nobody. I don't pass messages. Put it on paper, bro. I've been pinched way too many times because guess what? If the message that he gives... That I tell whatever, quote him, is not well received. If it's not well received and it makes waves, then he could always say, I didn't say it. It's happened to me a bunch of times. Hey, Splinter, go tell them this. I go tell them. All shit happens. And, and I go, oh, he told me. You know, he told me to say it. And he goes, no, I didn't. Fucking pinched. Hello, pinch. You're going to get pinched. It's happened way too many times. I don't repeat messages. Put that shit on paper. And this message he was trying to give anyway. No blacks in the dorm. They took them all out. Why would I go tell the South Side, the Pisces to ride the South Siders? Not my business. Ride against who? The blacks are gone. It's just the whites, the South Siders, Pisces, North Indians, and now there's no tension between the Daniels and the South Siders. I'm just not going to give that message. I don't feel it's important. The Pisces should know what they're going to do. If not, they ain't going to hear it from me. So I looked, he gave me that message, and I, okay, bye. I'm back to my bunk. Hey, what'd that do you want? Oh, I don't know. Nothing. I mean, it's no disrespect. But how much respect would I get if I get pinched? If I relayed your message? And then at the end, why does someone keep blowing me the fuck up, man? Come on, dog. Homie. Okay. So, be that as it may. Yeah, I didn't relay that message, man. But the point being, Pisces usually ride the Southsiders. So, trip on this, man. Also, the Pisces are very, very clever. They're very clever. They're very good at making stuff. They can make all kinds of stuff from scratch. They're just very good at it, man. They're just known for it. They're clever. They're smart. They get in there and they make all kinds of stuff. Point being, one time I'm in D-Pod, in county jail, and D-Pod runs their program 20-hour lockdown. They let a handful of cells out for four hours. So you and some other guys are going to be out for four hours, and you're going to be locked down for 20. Hope you have a cool celly, someone to get along with, to be chopping it up with. Last time I was there, a good buddy of mine, Jamie, is up on the top tier. He had a pice up for a celly. Didn't speak a lick English. And they're stuck in there 20 hours a day together. I was like, dude, I was like, how do you handle that, man? He goes, hey, we just sit here and just make shit all day long. So Pete them out, damn sure do, man. They make frames, picture frames, dream catchers, everything you can imagine. I like the little soap holders because you don't want to be dropping your soap after all. They got these soap holders. Soap- Count to ten. Take a deep breath. They have these soap holders. They're made of plastic because your lunch comes in a plastic. They stretch that shit up and twist it, wind it, blah, blah, blah. Next you know, hey, you got a badass soap holder. Put your soap in it, tightens up, you wear it around your neck. And you just you wash right through it. It's a nice little thing. Two suits, you could have one all day long. They make cool shit. I'm out on the farm, the minimum. It's the last time I was out there, and the cops ended up rolling me up. A few days later, not a couple weeks later, I'm at the court. If I had time, I'll touch on that. I'm out there, the male minimum, kicking heroin like a motherfucker, just got arrested, and I'm straight kicking like Van Damme. Not feeling good. I get there, and they tell me, hey, somebody from Barrack 6, just like a week ago, threw Tried to throw two dimes this way, missed, and two dimes went up on the damn roof. Two dimes went up on the roof. 
because you're in the dorm out there on the farm. It's a little 35 man dorm, whatever. They have mini yards so they can lock you in with the gate, and they do lock you in. Every every barracks has its own little gate, a little mini yard, phones. Above the phones, the patio, the tables outside, there's a little overhang, a roof, for lack of a better word. Someone threw some freaking garga, and it went on the roof, man. They're telling me this, and I'm kicking like I'm just, I'm going to get it. Now, people have been trying for this whole 10 days to try to get it. They didn't bring my determination to the table, though. I'm sick, kicking like Bruce Lee and Van Damme put together, and I want to get this heroin. So I come up with some old chintzy uh, fish in line, and I'm throwing it up there, and I'm trying to pull... And it's no avail. Nothing's coming down. This paisa comes up to me, though. Don't speak a lick of English. Tell me, hold on real quick. He goes inside the barracks, comes out with a contraption. It's like a stick, like from a mop or a broom, a towel, a sheet, some other stuff uh, put together. And he went over to the fence. There's a little tiny fence. There's an area where you can fill up like a mop bucket with water. Excuse me real quick. Filled by a little mop bucket with water. And it's like a little chain link fence. He went out, it looked like he'd been working on it for a while. You couldn't tell when he glanced at it, but he pulled on it just so, and a piece popped out, and he put his contraption on it, and brrr, next thing you know, he's up. He's up there, and he had his own little fishing line. He had a cleared bed. He can go all the way on the roof, but he was pretty much high up to where, like, his waist up, up there, and he was standing on this thing he made that was leaned up, wrapped up in the fence. Dude, I was totally impressed. He had his own fishing line, whoosh, he got the thing, brought it down. It was in soap and socks, and it was two big old fat dimes of heroin. He gave it to me. First thing I did, I was like, I took care of him, gave him some soups. Because I didn't want later to say, hey, you didn't get the pies of his little piece. He don't want black, he don't do black. I'm going to do the black. This is my homeboy's ball of bum sick. It's my black. But here you go, bro. I gave him a little bit of um, soups. He was happy. What tripped me off those, that little contraption he made. But anyway, we all got high, we got loaded, kicked back, I shared with a couple people. Went out throughout the day. Later on the night, go to bed. I'm in bed sleeping. That paisa comes and wakes me up with another paisa. Hey, help him make bed. Get up. One dude who had the contraption that he built that got up on the fence didn't speak English at all. The buddy he bought, brought with him spoke a little bit of English. Tell me to come with him in the bathroom. Still kind of groggy. I don't really sleep. I've been loaded on the heroin. I'm just kind of like out of it. I'm like, oh, what's this, man? So I go in the bathroom with him. I'm like, what's up? And they go, roof. Roof, go. I'm go, roof. And I was like, what? I thought they were asking me, do I want to go on the roof? I'm like, no, I don't want to go on the roof. There's nothing up there anymore. Thank you. You guys got the only heroin up there. Man, I really appreciate that. Good looking out. No, I don't want to go on the roof. And they look at me for a minute, look at each other, speak Spanish, look at me. They're like, go, go on the roof. I was like, no, man, I don't want to go on the roof. I was totally confused. But at this point, man, I love this dude. He got me the heroin off the roof earlier. I got nothing but love for him. I'll sit in the bathroom and be confused all night long. So I'm just like, what are we doing? I'm just like, okay, roof, no, no go, roof. But hey, I feel you. I'm here with you. What are we going to talk about? The roof? It's a hell of a roof. I'm not getting on that motherfucker. What are we doing? Finally, he said, city. Roof, go, city. And I was like, oh, the city. I was like, leaving? And it dawned on me, that little contraption. He didn't just make it right there on the spot so I can get on the roof, get the heroin. He had had it made because he's planning a little fucking escape or some shit. And he came and hit me up, wanted me to go with them. But you know what? Hey, that's an honor. Thank you very much. Do I want to go roof city? No, nah, I'm cool. I was like, oh, shit, you guys going to the city? I was like, no, man. I said, I'm good. I'm cool. Thank you very much. Especially, I'm loaded. I'm feeling like, dude, I could stay here forever. I'm feeling good and shit. Like, shit, I ain't tripping on nothing, bro. Now, I don't want to go. I'm chilling. I'm kicking it. That would have ruined my high to try to leave. Fuck that. Good thing I was high. Can you imagine if I was kicking the dope? I might have been like, yeah, fuck that. Go roof city. Let's do the damn thing. No, I said, no, nah, dude, I'm cool. I'm kicking it. Went back to bed. Thinking, what's going to happen? Not five minutes later, I hear, hey! Hey! And all kinds of running and keys. They got caught just putting their little contraption up. They didn't, didn't even make it to the roof. They got caught manipulating the fence. Cops came in, gaffled them, rolled all their stuff out. And that was it. See you later, guys. Good looking out there. I really appreciate they did that for me. And man, it sucks that they got caught. But damn, it was crazy. Where else are we going? Hold up. I might as well just tell you. So yeah, about a couple weeks later... I was on the farm, the mill minimum, Pice dude, him, his buddy got gaffled up for trying to get on the fence, the roof, whatever. I ended up going to court a couple weeks later. I'm in court, the mill minimum wear blue clothes. Pre-trial has brown, and Max Mead has, I can't really remember. I'll, I'll get there. I might have to pause it to think about it, or I might not even give a fuck with that detail out. I'm wearing blue clothes on the farm. Go to court, the cop sees me, he's like, you're a mill minimum. I go, yes. He says to another cop, I want this guy to go to the hole. When you guys get back to Laredo, I was like, the hole? What do you want me to go to the hole for? He didn't say that to me, just because I almost got the hole. And I go, you know what, that's fucked up, man, it's Mother's Day. Because it was, it was Mother's Day. I was like, it's fucking Mother's Day today, dude, and you're going to send me to the hole? And he got, that got his attention, he looked at me, he's like, were you a mother? I said, no. I said, do you have kids? I said, no, but 
Because Pastor Mainz, that's fucked up. Who wants to get a hole on a Mother's Day, dude? It's Mother's Day and you're in his castle me up for no fucking reason. He's like, yeah, I want him to the hole. He walked away. I told another um, guard, because the one who said go to the hole was a red patch, a real sheriff driving around the cars. They're the bailiffs. The transporting the guys who work at the jail had the blue patch. I told his blue patch, what's up with that? Fucking hole, it's bullshit. He goes, dude, it doesn't work like that. Don't even trip. I went back to Mel Minim, the farm, forgot all about it, had a long day at court, went kicking back in the barracks. Later on that night, they call me, rolled up, come to the duty office. I was like, fuck, man. Everyone's like, you're going home, you're going home, you got bailed out. Give me all your shit, give me all your shit. As soon as they call your name to go anywhere, everyone's like, let me have all your stuff. Nah, motherfucker, I ain't going nowhere. They're taking me to the hole, I thought. I thought this was fucking stupid as fuck for no reason at all. They didn't take me to the hole, though. Took me straight to pre-trial. Sat there for about a month or so. My cellie was Oscar from Compton, from Southsider Gang, Tiny Lopes. I might be pronouncing it wrong. Someone correct, corrected me last time in the comment section. can't remember what I said, but I think it's the Tiny Lopes. Good-ass Southsider, youngster from Compton. He's my cellie. Love living with him. Good dude. Then they end up sending me to Max Mead. I became good friends with this paisa, Ruben. I fucking love this dude, man. He's a good motherfucker. He's from Rex and Acres, my neighborhood. He had me laughing. He was so funny. Ironwood, if you're watching this, I have a feeling that he is because his brother Brandon watches. I mean, his brother Aaron. What? That was kind of mixed up, huh? Aaron watches. Shout out. What's up, Aaron? And I have a ma I imagine he told his brother Ironwood, hey, Splinter has a channel, blah, blah, blah. Ironwood, if you're watching, do you remember Ruben? Now, Pison, we're living in Max Mead. Good dude. Had me laughing my ass off. He's always playing pranks, and we're just laughing and joking around. And we just served breakfast. You wake up at 2.33 in the morning. When you do that, you're kind of like giggling, like lightheaded anyway. Aren't you? You feel like you're dr on drugs, and you wake up at 2.30 in the morning, and you have to like work and shit. So then it's, and then it's joking around. He had me laughing. I remember one time reading the paper, someone was selling a horse for 200 bucks. He's like, what the fuck? A horse for $200? What kind of horse is that? Laughs my ass off. Be that as a man. I would get these two big red rashes. They're size of quarters. Right here. Bam. They itched. I couldn't stand them. Two big red rash things on either side the size of a quarter. Bam. Like this. I'm like, what's up? One day, Ruben, my dog, the Pisa, told me, you know what? He said, that's athlete's foot. That's fungus on your face right there. I was like, yeah, right, dude. What do you want me to do, pee on it? Like, pssst. Yeah, you know, bullshit. Athletes fit on my face. Get the fuck out of here. He's like, no, dude, serious. I'm not joking. It's a fungus. I had this cream, this athlete's foot cream. If you rub it on your face, that should be gone in a week. I was like, what the fuck? I was like, yeah, right. You're fucking bullshit. But inside, I'm thinking, wait a minute, what? But is this athlete's foot? If I put athlete's foot, will go away? I'd love it to go away. I hate it. It itches. It looks ugly. I can't stand it. Dude, could it be athlete's food? I could picture I'm like doing all these push-ups. People walking by, fucking yuck, athlete foot dust. Up in my grill, dude. Whoa, here I am. I'm the only one who has it. That's kind of odd. Be that as it may. Dude, can I really get rid of it with athlete's foot cream? He's telling me a good one. Tell me to try it. I'm like, dude, you're clowning. Like, oh, I got an earache. Should I put mustard in there? Come on, dude, you're bullshitting. You're fucking with me. He's like, no, dude, try it. So I start trying it. I'd be putting it on, looking at everybody in the corner of my eye, waiting for them. Gah, ha, ha. Got you, motherfucker, you stupid motherfucker. Athlete's foot on your face. What? But no, no one clowned me. And I put it on my fucking face. And sure enough, that shit went away. The shit went away. I had an athlete's foot on my motherfucking face. So I had to put athlete's foot cream. And that shit went away. And I was so happy. But the selling point was, Ruben asked me. I was like, nah, dude, fuck that. You're fucking with me. He goes, does it dry up when you go outside? I was like, how do you know? Like, dude, well, how in the fuck do you know? Because, yes, it does. It only breaks out when I live indoors and for self a long time. At this point, I'd been locked indoors for four months fighting this case. Pre-trial, Max and me, no sun. First off, I get pale like a vampire, and then this rash breaks out every single time. Then when I get out to hit mainline, I get out on the yard and start getting sun, it goes away. I said, yes, as a matter of fact, it does dry up in the sun. He said, dude, there you go. Got yourself a classic case of some fungus. Classic case of some athlete's foot right there on your motherfucking face, big dog. I got the cream for it. I put it on and it went away. I had to get a job one time too. Let me add this. And they gave me a full physical. My doctor came in. You know, they have you in a gown. I have my boxers on pretty much. I'm naked except for boxers in a gown. And he comes by and he's like, I go, my good doc? He goes, yeah. He gave me a real disgusted look on his face. So he goes, you have athlete's foot. And walked out. Well, fuck, give me some cream. Give me, you have any cream that Ruben gave me? That shit was fire. But yes, I do. I always have at these feet because what it is, it's the socks they give us in prison. They weren't cotton. The cheapest, nasty material they can come up with. I don't know what this shit was. It's PIA. It's weird stuff. And what you do when you get socks, you get yourself a new pair. You go through hell or high water. I don't care. You don't change your stuff into laundry. You get stuff in laundry. No, you do not. You go in there. You get brand new boxers, brand new socks. Wash that shit in the shower. You put your socks on your hands like this with soap. Wash it. Hang it to dry. Wash, rinse, repeat. Keep wearing that shit. It's your shit. You wear it. You wash it. 
And after a while, man, the athlete's feet just fucking post up from wearing the same socks that are hand washed and whatever that material PIA uses. Not sure. But anyway, man, that's it for now. Shout out to the Pisces. Cut the string on this, let it fly. Peace!